We have another Toronto Raptors signing as the team has come out and signed Quincy Guerrero to an Exhibit 10 contract this offseason for the Toronto Raptors. A Canadian guy that has interesting sort of skill set, so we'll discuss him as well as Jonathan Mogbo, the player the Toronto Raptors selected with the 31st overall pick, has spoken out about joining the Toronto Raptors and how excited he is to join this team. And frankly, despite some Raptors fans, some portion of the fan base being disappointed, the team didn't supply, select Filipowski or Tyler Kolek, some of the guys that were were available at that 31st overall selection they're getting one over solely on the fact of how awesome this dude's character is his storytelling ability in these quotes and obviously who he is as a basketball player the more we watch his highlights dive into his game so we'll discuss all of those latest updates but before we dive into any of that folks make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it just yet i mean if you want to stay up to date with everything regarding this toronto raptors team we're posting like four videos a day trying to keep Keep you up to date on all of the fast-moving stuff that's going on with this Toronto Raptors squad during the draft and free agency process. So make sure you don't miss a single thing. Hit that subscribe button. But let's dive into the first topic of news. And it's the Toronto Raptors making a signing. So news has come out that the Raptors have agreed to an Exhibit 10 deal to bring undrafted forward Quincy Guerrero into their 2024 training camp for essentially a tryout. That's what the Exhibit 10 deals do. You know, they can convert to options where they can become two ways, where they can get in full-time sort of roster position but this is how the Toronto Raptors sort of fill up their training camp with players that could end up making the roster will be on the team during preseason to get that roster spot and Gray is an interesting piece so the Montreal native spent the past season the NCAA in the Big Ten Conference with the Illinois Fighting Illin Illini <laughs> goodness gracious where he posted 9.6 points per game six rebounds while knocking down 47 percent of his shots from the floor Guerrero played an important role for a team that made their way to the Elite Eight in the March Madness uh, this past spring where they ultimately fell uh, to the eventual champions the university of connecticut uh, huskies this completes the six eight seniors fifth and final year of college basketball he previously suited up for the oregon ducks and the syracuse or orange for two years apiece so again Bounced around a little bit in college, didn't really find his footing. His stats, his uh, statistical growth is a pretty interesting thing to look at. I mean, Quincy Guerrero himself, as the article mentioned, you know, 6'8", 220, you know, played as uh, from uh, Montreal and didn't have the crazy stats. 9'6", and basically no assists, was efficient from the field and was a pretty solid three-point shooter in his last season in college. Shot 37% from behind the three-point line, but other than that, the stats aren't that eye-opening, aren't indicative of a guy that's going to be a guaranteed shoe in to compete for a roster spot. I mean, the lack of facilitating, the lack of uh, playmaking ability is concerning. And the fact that he's been a 50, roughly 50% 50 three uh, free throw shooter over his last two seasons in college, 56%, and then 58% uh, the season prior. And the fact that it's getting worse is discouraging. The three-point percentages did go up, but uh, the free throw shooting steadily went down so the improvement as a shooter you'd hope that he'd be moving in a direction moving in a space where that uh those free throw percentages would be increasing so again am i projecting this guy to be a guaranteed roster spot to be getting a pickup despite the fact he's from montreal place i lived for a couple years you know i uh i don't project highly that he'll be making this toronto raptors team could be an interesting 905 pickup like a little bit older as a senior in college but still maybe has some upside it has athletic as a sole defender but not much of a playmaker not not a crazy elite shooter, but uh, we'll be interesting to see how he ends up panning out with this Toronto Raptors group. But that's not the only thing we're discussing in here today because the Raptors have another prospect that they've added to the mix that they've added to their discussion. And that includes Jonathan Mogbo, who is a Mogbo, who's a guy that uh, has a lot of Raptors fans just uh, elated, excited with uh, him coming into the group, coming into this team. And he's had some really interesting quotes, you know, with his opening press conferences as he's joined the Toronto Raptors in the mix with everything. Essentially, Jonathan Mogbo has come out and said that Scotty Barnes and him are best friends since childhood, and they grew up together in Florida. So we knew they had a tight relationship, but best friends is very different than, you know, he's my homie from Florida, he's my good friend or something like that. No, he said best friends. And a lot was discussed about his relationship with the Toronto Raptors, you know, top guy and Scotty Barnes basically came out and said during the the press conference that uh Scott that they're really close I uh, think I saw him crying at my draft party last night it was tears of joy and I didn't shed a tear so there had to be a I had to be the stronger one obviously getting selected things like that but Bogo went on to say that uh in fourth grade he met Scotty Barnes and they played AAU together the first time he met him I remember coming back to his house he had the Kobe jersey on the gray Kobe sixes on and since that point we've been best friends ever since so Again, best friends is uh, it's a big word. 
it's not a title that's thrown around loosely. So, you know, that's cool that he ha does have that tight relationship with Scotty Barnes. And basically went on to say that uh, how many times did Mogan play Barnes one-on-one? -on -one? I'd say pr play twice, probably twice, to be honest. Uh, one time for Sirius and who won? Uh, I'm not going to let him answer. I'm going to let him answer because we both have uh, two different answers to that. And as someone that loves a good game of one-on-one, -on -one, I love the, the competitiveness there. You though, Scotty Barnes, again, NBA star. Super, I guess Scotty had that development curve. Wasn't that crazy of elite prospect growing up. So the one-on-one -on -one ability are, uh, are the, you never know who's going to win a game of one-on-one. -on -one, but I, don't know. I, love, I love the competition. I love that friendly banter in terms of what's going on along those points. But also had some interesting things to say regarding his game, what he can provide for this team. So he says he takes from different types of players, not Nas Reed's ability to read the game, attack mismatches, as well as P.J. Washington's role awareness, and Scotty Barnes' passing IQ and hunger for the game. He intends to improve his shooting at the next level and doesn't want to change who he is as a player. So that's all stuff that is very, very encouraging to me because, again, Nas Reed is one of the uh, big man elite extraordinaires in the NBA that it's not a steal of a contract for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Has been linked to the Toronto Raptors for years at this point as well. And Mogo being able to be a big man that can move like Nasri, can dribble like Nasri, that's a great thing to sort of see. And also P.J. Washington, you know, being out there with his sort of role awareness, knowing that Mogo's not going to come in and just be hoisting up shots, trying to do too much, but he does have the skills to do these types of things out there on the basketball court. That's a positive thing to really look at as well. For a guy drafted in the second round, it's going to be more of a role player, utility player for your team that's a positive thing and then obviously the passing and this is something we've discussed a ton about this selection this draft pick for the toronto raptors right now having forwards that can play in darko rayakovich's system it's the reason Chris Boucher essentially fell out of the lineup for the Toronto Raptors last season. It's because of his inability to really play make, to facilitate. He's more of a possession ends here type of guy, right? Mobo is a guy that can definitely facilitate, can do his thing out there on the court and, uh, you know, be an athlete, attack the rim, do his thing, and attack the bucket, but also facilitate for his teammates. And the fact that he doesn't want to change who he is, you know, as a hustler or rebounder or get to the basket kind of guy, but he does want to improve as a shooter, that's exactly what we want to hear. We don't want him to be limited as a basketball player, but still come into the league doing the things that he's effective at doing. You know, not a you know, if you have a guy that's a primetime hustler, defender, rebounder and stuff, and they just force themselves to become a three-point shooter, right? It's not their natural skills. That's not the direction you want players to come in in terms of your development stuff. Lean into the things you're good at and then fix the holes in your game until they become things you're really awesome at. So I like his perspective. I like his energy. He also told a story about uh, him getting mistaken for Precious Achua. Yeah, he's is. <laughs> This is the the one here. Basically, when he was visiting Barnes uh, during his rookie year, the first time in the city, they were riding scooters around town. He went to a pharmacy to get some snacks. And we were walking through uh, some aisle, and someone was like, hey, it's Precious and Scotty. So uh, he's already been mistaken as former Toronto Raptors, and now it's uh, you love to see it. He said similar hair and stuff, but I don't know. I love to see it. It's uh, a guy that seems like an awesome personality for this Raptors group. But let me know what you guys think of the, the pickups. I guess the second round pick and the signing uh, in the comment section down below. You guys are best thing as far. Subscribe to the channel. I'm signing. Now, cheers.